So I'm going to run through how to make rain and I'm going to focus on realistic rain because once you can do that, doing more cartoony or less realistic rain isn't too hard. So first things first, we need a surface for the rain to hit. And so I'm just going to make this quick 2 meter by 2 meter plane and we're going to put the rain on here and we're going to do this entirely with geometry nodes. So let's jump to the geometry nodes tab. Now create the uh, geometry nodes thing and I'm going to lose the plane because we don't really care for it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do distribute points and faces these can be our individual drops of, of rain and then I'm going to do instances on points and then into that I'm going to feed mesh primitive icosphere and so you've got these enormous balls but a bit of Googling will tell you that your typical ball of rain actually is a sphere. Rain is not raindrop shaped. Um, that's more of a comic de depiction. Real rain falls as a basically spherical with a slight flattening at the front, but that's small enough we don't care. And it's about two millimeters across and Blender's units are meters. So to get that, we set the radius to one millimeter. And then we got some very, very tiny things of rain. So let's increase the numbers. I'm going to knock the density from 10 up to 300. Yeah, let's go to 500 just to be sure. So now we've got all the other little drops of rain. Now, as rain falls, it falls quite quickly, so it's always subject to motion blur. And this is a problem because motion blur is an expensive thing. If you're in cycles, you could 100% render out photorealistic rain by having the motion blur on it, and it wouldn't cost you that much. You can switch motion blur on for EV, and that does work, but it isn't a great. So to keep this effect cheap, we're going to fake the motion blur. And for doing that, we're just going to stretch the raindrops to reflect the speed they're moving at. So we take the icosphere. I'm going to just increase the subdivisions, and also I'm going to do shade shade smooth so mesh set shade smooth just so you know rain is water it's a smooth surface um, and I'm just going to take geometry transform and we're going to stretch in the z direction to get a thing now rain falls at about nine meters a second so if I do nine divided by the height of a raindrop which is 0 0.002 2 millimeters one millimeter is the radius, two millimeters is the height. We get these very long streaks that should be about nine meters high. Obviously, we're not keeping the frame of the camera open for the entire second. We're keeping it open for 24th of a second, that being the standard frame rate of a film camera. So we divide this by 24. In this case, these much more reasonable things. Then we need to take, take into account one last fact, which is whilst we take images for a 24th of a second interval, we actually only keep the shutter open for half that. So we need to divide this number again by two. You just type maths into Blender things. And this is about the right length for a drop of rain and the right size, assuming one meter in Blender equals one meter in real world, to fake the motion blow in a raindrop. Finally, um, I'm going to go material and set a material because we need to set a, a rain material. And at the end of the day, rain is just water. So we can hop over to the material tab, new water, and now we'll uh, select it here and we'll hop over to shading. So I'm just going to zoom right in onto some raindrops so we can really see them. And we'll dial it in. Now, to do water is actually very straightforward. Base color up to full white. There's no color on this. Roughness to zero. Transmission to one, full transmission. Index of refraction, 1.333. That's index of refraction for water. Um, and now we just need to tell EV to do some things. So we're going to hop down to the material tab. Um, and we're going to switch the, the the blend mode into alpha blend and we'll do the shadow mode to none so the rain isn't casting shadows you'll generally find it's better and also switch on screen space reflections and that will get the best effect for your rain if I deselect it you'll see that this does actually look a bit like a large number of raindrops just frozen in the air um, if we go into rendered mode, you'll find that very little is happening. 
Um, and this is because rain is not really there unless you've got the lighting right. And ideally, you want some sort of dark background so the rain can stand out with powerful lights hitting it, like the sun. So I'm just going to put HDRI in just to get an environment in which we can see our thing. So standard HDRI has it loading, it goes pink, open, I'll hop over to my HDRI fo folder. Da, 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 da. And we'll go with boiler room. And I'm choosing that because it's inside a factory, you've got some windows, but we've also got some dark background. So you can still see the raindrops, but they're catching the light. And they're just sort of hovering in midair as these things of ice. Now, in reality, you also want to drop the alpha to respect the motion blur, meaning that it's not as visible. But I'm going to keep the alpha up high just for emphasis to really push the effect. Anyway, we've got ourselves some raindrops. That's great. They're not moving. If I go back to the layout and I'll just increase the timeline, so we've actually got some time, 48 frames. I'm playing the animation, the raindrops are still, they're not moving. So back to geometry nodes, how do we get them to move? Well, let's pull them away from the floor in the first instance. So go to instances, translate instances, and this allows us to just pull them up and down by offsetting them. And what we'll do is we go to utilities, random value, and we'll just Oh, grab a vector, combine x, y, z. We want to go up in the world, so we'll add that to z, and we'll do that. And now we've got them at varying heights over a one meter interval. So we've got ourselves some rain here. Um, but it's still static, it's not moving. So, another node, input, scene time. This is the time, and we can get it in seconds. So next, next up, utilities, maths, time in seconds, how fast does rain fall? Nine meters per second. Multiply, falling is negative, going down in the world. Multiply by minus nine. And then what we'll do is we'll add another maths node. We'll pull this over here and we'll add this value onto this value. And now what we have, once I rearrange it, is rain that reflects time. But the problem is it's just doing a single burst and it's going in the wrong direction. So to fix that, we'll go into math and we'll go wrap and we'll go from min zero up to a max of say eight meters and we'll increase the rand value to also be eight. So we get the whole, whole height. And now if I press play, we're getting rain falling from the sky. And at this point, you can in fact stop, you have your rain. As a further note, however, if you want to rotate it, this rotation here just works. So you can now do it at an angle. Now, the other thing to know, this density number here, you want to go high to really push the density if it's like heavy rain. But in the viewport, that's going to get really annoying because you're going to be surrounded by this wall of rain. It's going to be very slow for people with slower computers. That's not going to be great. So add a switch node, switch it to um, integer, and then have, grab the input is viewport node and put that in. And this allows us to simply have two numbers. Um, when you're in the viewport, set it to 500, say. Um, but when you're actually rendering, set it to say 3000 to get really heavy rain. And if we hop over to layout, let's just pull the camera around to something a little more uh, sensible. So we got ourselves some rain. So in the viewport, we get this much rain. But if I hit render, we get far more rain. And that's the end of the tutorial.